It is a balmy 5 degrees this afternoon with a wind chill of negative 10 Fahrenheit. It's going to go well below a negative uh, or below zero tonight without wind chill and 20 to 30 mile per hour winds. So a delightful winter moment here and we want to focus on the chickens <clears throat> in this video. I don't know how it's doing it but the compost mountain is crackling. It's steaming hot in there. I got to do a temperature probe but definitely over 70 or 80. Uh, the more material we add the more and more it builds but I'm going to close this flap because the wind is so intense and the cold is so raw that we need to just seal them in there. Hold on a second. You can see the very elegant technical solution here to keeping the wind off the space. It's battened at the top. One hay fork on one side is kind of pinning that door hinge, so to speak. And then a hay fork on this side leaves just enough of a nice flap they can come and go. And the last couple mornings I've been coming out and using the hay fork to fluff the hay up. You see, she's demonstrating the come and go ability of the space. She's gonna go under the coop for a bit. And I talked about uh, five days ago needing to make some upgrades. Oh my God, it's cold out here. <laughs> Let me get into the coop where some folks are kicking it. Ah, much nicer. Um, I've made some upgrades on the perches, the roosting system, and our nesting boxes. So I'm gonna get into that today. I've wanted to upgrade the roosting situation in here for a while. Um, in the last video I showed that in this, that basically the, the roosts were kind of makeshift. They went along the back wall and scooped around and then I added an extra piece later on when we had more chickens. And for deep litter method, it's kind of hard to get into the corners and turn compost. And so I took some feedback, uh, great feedback from folks in regards to, um, hey, the bars that the chickens rest on should be wider than what I've had. And pretty much all the examples I've ever seen, it's narrow roosting bars. Um, but the argument in a cold climate for wider roosting bars is that if they're a full three inches or wider, <clears throat> so in this case they're nominal two by fours, then they can put their the whole pad of their feet on this board and rest their body over their feet and in very cold weather be able to keep their whole feet warm instead of having toes wrapped around. And the first night that they came in here, I made this two nights ago, uh, they were all sitting their big puff bodies over their toes and they looked so much more comfortable. So thank you for that feedback. Um, this entire roosting setup, <clears throat> sorry I've got a little throg frog in my throat, is made in uh, fully from pallets uh, that I gathered from a local place and it's suspended from the roof. I tested that it held my full body weight in random places, I would put my whole body on there and bounce around, no uh, swinging or shaking. It's hanging from the roof, but it also is knit into the side walls in a few places, so that stabilizes it. And with one, two, three roosting positions, it accommodates more or less the entire flock. There are a few extra birds that can't fit on there, so I need to figure that out. But for now, they're sitting on these bales of hay in the corner and that seems to be just fine for them. But it's a huge upgrade because now I can get under this entire space to add more hay every day and to turn it. And they've got a lot more floor space that's open. So the roosting bars, pretty happy with that upgrade. It came in under one dollar to build them since the lumber was all from pallets that I disassembled. The more significant upgrade in some ways is to have actual nesting boxes again. I mentioned in the uh, Honest Update video that we had this kind of lull where our old hens here had stopped laying more or less and so that we had an old nesting system I took that apart and then since nobody was really laying I just kinda had a couple um, milk crates laying around that sometimes they would lay in outside and inside but now that they're picking up steam again and wanting to lay 
they really deserve to have proper nesting boxes. And what I've made is nine bay nesting box, again entirely out of salvaged pallets. Off the top of my head, I can't remember exactly where they came from, but it may come to me. Um, this is again under a dollar. Uh, the only cost is in screws. And let me move. So I made this extra bar here with the idea that this can come in and out very easily. Pardon me, Mrs. Ladies. They've already put a poop on there, that's good. And this way I can pull this out and clean in here, but the idea is that they can bounce up onto this to get into the different layers. Um, and it's basically three shelves that are roughly 12 inches, well, 14 inches deep. And then with these dividers that are made out of just off cuts of plywood that I took off of the pallets, I can make them wider or more narrow depending. If I start to see that some boxes have two hens in them, I can make them a little bit less wide. And then they've got some bars in the front so the hens can land on them and walk around to the next one. And there's a little space up above and seems to be working. I've got some fake eggs that I've ordered that I'll put in here if they don't use them, but these are actually real eggs from today. So nice upgrade. We'll see if nine boxes will satisfy the needs of our flock. We have 63 hens, so there's less nesting boxes than is ideal, um, but since they're older hens and they're laying pretty infrequently, this might satisfy it. And then the idea is this top area helps insulate and protect the hens that are in there and also acts as an overflow for hens that need to roost on some more areas throughout the day or at night. And then this slides back in so that it's easy for them to hop up and get into the boxes or hop up onto this one to get into these boxes or on top. Uh, and the actual nesting box condominium is screwed into the wall with one or two screws. You can see this couple of hens are still using the milk crates which work fine enough but the dimensions are a little funky um, and a lot of times I'm seeing two hens in there at once, which is not ideal. So hopefully the nesting box design that I've put together here will help keep them one hen per box at a time. So that's the upgrade for now. We've got the hay bales in here, the deep litter method under one block that all the hens can be on, wider uh, perching bars, so thank you for that input, and a nesting box system that should be a lot nicer. The next thing to do is for me to figure out hanging blankets in front of this space and on this side to hold more of the warmth in there. It's a balance between keeping the warmth in and the drafts off, but then also allowing any ammonia or gases or moisture that build up from down low uh, to keep them from building up in that space. So I'm not going to seal it off, but I'll add some drapes and curtains for these cold nights. We should have a couple more really brutally cold nights. The hens can all nestle in together, lay eggs in a nice comfortable box, and we'll just keep making upgrades. That is the slow but steady improvements in the Arctic blast time. I've got to stop since I think I can feel three fingers, and I'm pretty sure I came out here with ten. Thanks for watching. <laughs>